Hi, so just a warning, this uh, video is entirely unscripted and unrehearsed, so anything could, could go wrong. Um, I also have to apologise for the background noise, it's pretty warm here today. I've got the window open and we seem to have uh, builders working nearby, Coast Guard helicopters going overhead and an abundance of seagulls today, so uh, it could sound a bit noisy in the background, but uh, so apologies for that. Um, in this uh, video, we're going to be having a look at using the new Elementor Loop Carousel widget, uh, which is virtually new, but if you're running the latest versions of uh, Elementor, you should have available. Uh, you may need to pop over into Elementor settings and features and make sure loop here is active. Um, you also want to make sure you've got, I'm sure you have already, but you need to make sure you've got things like uh, Flexbox box container um, active as well. So um, without further ado, let's hop in. Um, I've created a new page here. It's got header and footer. Um, but uh, I've created a new page and what we're going to do is use the new loop carousel widget as a kind of pseudo replacement for the standard Elementor slides widget which is good and has a lot of value um, but it does have some design limitations in what we can do with it so as I say we're going to be using the new loop carousel widget to give us more design options um, and actually the finished article will look uh, will look very similar to how the slides looking hopefully even a bit better the other the other shortfall of the uh, the slides widget is we have to create one of these for every slide that we want which is not terribly uh, convenient always but um, as I say it's a good widget but uh, there's a better way of doing it so let me just delete that the other thing I'm going to do on this blank page here is also just to hide the title. Uh, we don't need that. Um, so first thing then, this loop widget can get a bit confusing if you look at it for the first time, but uh, actually if you break it down, it, it, it's pretty simple to do. And we're going to be using WordPress posts, the standard WordPress posts uh, for this. Um, and each post we create will be a slide in its own right. Um, which gives us even more flexibility. You can do it with posts, you can do it with WooCommerce uh, products, uh, or indeed any co uh, custom post type that you may have created. So here we are in our Elementor blank page. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it in a flex box here. We can make it a column. Um, and then we're going to go over here and find our loop carousel, this new widget here. I'm going to drag that in. Now at first sight, um, this is probably the first part where you get a, a little bit uh, horrified and daunted, but don't be. Um, it's asking us here to create a template. And what we're going to be doing is, if you like, this is the carrier for the slides that we're going to create. And in this case, slides equal posts. Um, so let me just, uh, you can create a template from here directly by clicking that button, it'll ask you to save the page so far and take you into the template editor. But actually, I prefer to work with um, uh, work with the theme builder in Elementor directly, which gives us a little bit more control. So let's hop back into, um, into WordPress. And while we're here, I'll also create a couple of extra posts as well to show you what that looks like. I've already got some posts created, but we'll create a, a couple of new ones here. So let's add a new post. And we'll just call this slide one. And I'm going to give it a little bit of content to work with. The other thing I want to make sure we've got is a featured image. We're going to be using that, so it's important. We'll just pick that one and publish just using the standard uh, block editor inside uh, WordPress for this. Uh, just pop out of here now. Back to the dashboard, uh, create another new one, new post. And this one we'll call imaginatively slide two. And we'll again, we'll give it a little bit of text, but I'll give it some different text just for the hell of it. Copy that and paste it into here. And again, we want to make sure we've got a featured image, which we're going to be using. And for that, I'll choose this one. That should be big enough, plenty big enough. Okay, so 
So I've now created a couple of new posts and think about it like this. The posts that I'm creating here are going to be each individual slide. So I'm just giving it a header, some text, featured image. Obviously, if you're using posts for blog posts, um, then that could limit you here and you may have to then go down the rabbit hole of creating um, custom post types. Um, but uh, we'll assume that your posts are free and you're able to use them. So again, back into the editor. And as we said when we first came in here, I'm going to use the theme builder, the Elementor theme builder here, to create a template for each slide. And if we look down the left hand side, by the way, your screen may look slightly different to this depending on uh, the version you're using and how you've got things set up, but you want to be looking for a loop item here. Yes, I would like to create one, thank mm -hmm. you. Let that go and do its business, and this will bring up now a separate editor. You can choose from templates, but we're going to create our own. And first thing we're going to do, just have a look down here at this cog icon bottom left. Um, we'll give it a title, and we'll call it a uh, uh, pseudo slides template. Just realized I managed to spell pseudo first time, which is uh, remarkable. Um, the query, we're going to have posts. As I say if you had Woo WooCommerce in here, you'd have uh, WooCommerce products or custom post, you'd have it, the source in here, but uh, that'll do us for now. Apply that. Um, okay, so the editor will reload here now. And here we are. So let's go ahead and put our first container in. One of the things I'm going to do here, and I do tend to automatically, is set the panning to zero, which ensues, ensures that we go edge to edge now with everything that we do. Um, I'm going to give it, for consistency, I'm going to make it full width, because this will be full width within the container that we put it in, which is what we want. Um, and I'm going to give it a fixed height, in this case of 500 pixels. Uh, obviously choose whatever you need to do to, to, to make this right. Um, and while we're here, we'll go into style. I'll choose the background type and we're going to use dynamic data to call in the featured image like so. Now, while we're here, again, I want the position center center. I want repeat, no repeat, and I want it covered. Okay, our final slide will actually be wider than this, but uh, for now, um, that will do us fine. And the other thing I'm going to do now is just set up in this top level container. Um, by the way, talk about top level containers, this is where the navigator pane comes in really helpful um, because I can then see and name widgets accordingly because it can get confusing. So I tend to use the navigator for anything and everything so we can rename these like top level container and that will make sure we don't get lost as we go through now the other thing because i'm going to be putting a blurred background on um, i'm also going to put in here another container so i'm going to nest this container inside there and just call this one content like so and I'm going to put this container down the bottom so I can select the content justified as bottom and we may as well center it for good measure. I'm going to take out the padding as we did in the first, first one here, advanced padding zero, so we work edge to edge. I don't need to put any height on it or anything because that'll be automatic. You could do if you wanted to, but uh, we won't. Um, so let's put in, first of all, the slide title, which is really the post title. And uh, we'll just come here and pop in, no, not that one, pop in a head. Oh, I don't want this one here. Take that one out of the way. Uh, I want a heading. So if you're not aware, just a little tip as we go through, you don't have to any, any longer click and drag. You can actually just... Uh, a click and then we can just pop that into there let's center it let's uh we'll have the uh text white we'll set the content to be the post title like 
so. Okay, and now we're going to put in a post excerpt and for that I'm going to use the uh, text editor. So we're going to pop a text editor in here and you just want to make sure that we've got an extra, con we just want to make sure that this text editor is in the same container as the heading, which it is. And similarly, I'm going to change its style to uh, color white. I'm going to center it in the container. And the other thing I'll do in here, having zeroed everything out previously, I'm actually going to un unlock the padding and I'm going to put in a left and right padding of 12, just so it moves everything from the edges slightly. Okay, so there we go. So the next thing I'm going to do here, oh, actually that won't work, I'll do it a different way. Um, I'll show you in a moment. So while we're here, let's put a back. Let's put a, 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 a background on here. And for that, I'm actually going. I could go into style, background overlay, or background. Um, I'll put in an opaque layer, as we've seen previously. So let's just do that. I'm going to put in a background of almost black, um, and I'm going to take the opacity down to about 50%. But as I've said before, um, actually there's a nicer way to do it. And that is, I'm going to put in a, a, some uh, glass morphism effects. So using Elementor AI, we'll just go in here and say, uh, create a, we'll say black glass morph. Morphism background generate the code. Very helpful Elementor AI just for, for creating bits of code like this. Uh, very very simple and easy to do. Okay, there's our glass morphism background. We can adjust the blur etc. within here. Even if the code looks a bit scary, doesn't matter. It's obvious what these things do. 10 pixel blur, that'll do us for now. Now, I made a mistake here. I, I set the left and right in the up, up top level. Um, so let's just link those and go back to zero there. What I'm going to do is set the padding in here, left and right. So just unlink those. We'll set right to 12 and left to 12. I say, bear in mind as we go through this, your actual slide will be wider, but I just wanted to give it some breathing space up and down. We'll also set the top, um, actually we'll set the wall to about 12. That'll just give some breathing space in the final render. Um, and let's go back to our text editor now, dynamically fetch. And this is a relatively new feature in, in Elementor you may not be aware of. Um, if you select post excerpt and go into the little spanner icon here, you have the ability to select what your excerpt length is. I can safely make that about 30 characters. And I can say apply to post content, which will mean that Elementor will go and grab the first 30 words of this, of the content. So it's a way of auto generating excerpts effectively. There we go. Um, so that's cool. Um, while we're here, why not let's um, put a button in, a read more button, which always goes down. Well, again, make sure you pop it in the right content container and we'll say read more. I won't do much styling on this other than to make the button central to change the background to white, change the text color to something like that. Uh, border none, which I like. Uh, I don't want a border radius, which will give you. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but actually, what we could do here is to set it um, full width if we want. So justify the content that may work better for you here. So basically, that's our slide content. I want to link this dynamically here. So back to our button. And uh, the link is going to be the post URL. So that will take us through to the post, there we go. So 
that's my slide template done I'm going to publish that okay so let's go now back to the page we created I can't remember where that was so let's go to pages and date to bring up the last one here we go so I'm going to edit with Elementor very good and now when I click in here I can start typing its name you can't remember his name just press the space bar here we go so pseudo size template is what I created and now it's filled them in quite happily but if you remember rightly um, I said this was going to be wider where well, you could have it like this of course but if I now select um, so maybe the number of posts you have is six, it might be eight, it might be ten. Um, make sure it's enough. We're going to say display one slide and make slide on scroll just one. Um, you'll notice we have our arrows in there just like the slider widget and our pagination in there. Um, we can uh, we can style those in here. So navigation, let's have the color as we'll keep it as white. Um, let's have we don't want a border on it we don't want a background on it we could do it if we wanted to um, we can always select the size of those like so or we could not have them at all pagination i'm just going to leave as it is we can have it or, or not um, and there we go so i'm now going to update that And view the page okay so I think it's set to auto scroll at five seconds or we can of course use the uh, there we go and there's our slide one content that we created and these are other posts that I already have there so we can uh, oh that's a blank one But you get the idea we can uh, navigate around with these if we want to or we can just say auto roll and of course if i want to now click through to the full article i can click on there and it will take me where i want to be so there we go um i say it may sound a bit complicated um but actually it, it, it's quite simple once you get to grips with it if we look at uh, you want to edit that template which i'm sure you will at some point um, you can do so in the editor let's just make this uh, editor a little bit more narrow yeah so if you hover over here you can see it says edit template and it will save the changes of the main page before taking us to the template editor okay and here we are now I can edit the template within here so Hope that all makes sense. I hope that was useful. Um, here's an example of one in real life from a site I'm building. Let's just refresh the page so you can see what it's about. So in this top box here, I'm using WooCommerce products, but the um, concept is exactly the same. But in this case, I'm using it to uh, advertise products. So there we go. That, that's the loop carousel and using it as a replacement for the uh, slider widget and uh, so i hope that was useful any questions uh, do let me know thanks for watching